All right, now hold on. Now, now hold on, somebody. I need to be let know. <laughs> let me know immediately if you guys can hear me. If you're watching this in the future, we had some technical, technical, not technical. We had some technical difficulties with the first rendition of this live, and so I'm trying to make sure that the girls can hear me on this rendition. I did reduce it. Great. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'm glad y'all can hear me. <laughs> yes, victory. One thing about it, I think it was Rock Nation. <laughs> I think it was Rock Nation or the Barb's something. Something, honey. I'm blaming some institution greater than me. Okay, I'm blaming an institution greater than me. Now, first things first, hello to the wig. You know, I keep me a shake and go. It is necessary. Um, I'm in my let me grow my hair out era. So I'm like, girl, you need to keep a shake and go on, Jack. It is necessary. necessary. Um, so like I said before, as I get things pulled up, I do want to say this little thing. Hey, homo. Homeboy and homies, welcome and are welcome back to my corner of the internet, a corner where pop culture meets critical thought and medium ghetto antics. We are gathered here today to discuss a myriad, a myriad of things. Somebody said the barbs are to blame for this. You know, I'm going to keep my mouth up off that, okay? <laughs> I can't stand me. Okay, first let me delete the first video that we did because it's like, girl... There's no reason for her to exist. The live, ne it never happened. It never happened. Um, okay, so there's a couple of things that I wanna say off top. The first thing is, um, this video was supposed to be a Patreon exclusive because I just know that some of the things that we're gonna be getting into, I probably don't want to say in front of a large group of people. Um, but, you know, you know, here we are. Um, technical difficulties had other things to say. And also, there was a different way I wanted this to look and feel today. Um, but, you know, as a one-man show, all the things can't be done the way we want them to be done. And so, well, first of all, if you're watching this in the future, fast forward. I will put a timestamp in this live so that you can fast forward to when we actually begin the things. But um, if you're on the Patreon, I am going to be uploading some exclusive secret goodies just for y'all. I'm going to be uploading some BTS to my birthday, um, behind-the-scenes shit, you know, what we did when we was getting drunk and getting the things together um it's really fun and also i'm going to be uploading an exclusive full length interview that i'm doing for an upcoming video on black male femininity coming out in this way first of all wait 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 first of all i forgot to tell y'all why i'm giving this look because i'm black y'all and i'm black y'all and i'm bigly black and i'm black y'all shout out to it being black history month yes this is me with really really good lighting this is a mural of me with really, really good lighting. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Um, this was back in the day. Uh, what? 1974. 71. Fuck. Um, you know, when I was, when I was a girl, I've, I've, I've transitioned to be many things. I'm a shapeshifter. Bitch way maker. I'm all that. Don't you ever get it fucked up. Now Listen. Um, Black Lives Matter, happy Black History Month. And Patreon patrons, you have some exclusive things coming this week. Um, like the exclusive interview that's gonna be in this multimedia project. I think you guys are gonna really like the direction of where we're going. How long have I been talking? Too damn long without actually spelling out what we're getting into. Um, so damn, Herbie, you gotta delete. I gotta delete this video, y'all. Um, or at the very least, let me do it like this. Um I'm so sorry that I'm taking time away from you to be distracted to do this. But I don't want people going to that old video thinking that this that's this video. You get what I'm saying? Um, I just can't. I can't do y'all like that. I think that's the dirtiest way. The, the dirtiest way to do you. Okay. Woo! I'm excited. I'm excited because while I couldn't do all of the things that I wanted to do behind the scenes to make this production give all of the things, um, I did get some of my thoughts up on the screen. So we want to hope that the monitor works today because the spirit of disobedience and disruption is always in this area of the space. That spirit is just very much gutter by it. Um, okay, so there are many things on today's listicle, as you can see. <laughs> 
Um, so on today's listicle, we have. <laughs> Um, so we're gonna obviously we're gonna be discussing the Grammys. I think the the Grammys are an important institution, and I know that that's not necessarily a hot take in every space, but I think it's a hotter take in this space because um, we know that these institutions of power and prestige really ain't shit for real. So it's like, girl, why would you why would you care about the Grammys? And I think that we're I'm gonna spell that out. So we'll be discussing the night's highlights, my my sincere congratulations, um, the fashion dues of the night, and then we're gonna be discussing the night's lowlights, my shady congratulations, the night's fashion don'ts, um, and then my hopes for the future of the Grammys. Now before I do that, I do wanna read some of your comments because y'all have been wimbling down here. So let me say hey to some people and then we can get into the things. We can definitely get Hannah Baby says she finally caught a or they finally caught a live. Mwah. The monitor is monitoring. Yes, monitor. Yes, monitor. Julian, you always here. Love you. Tyler, you're here so often. Jasmine Youngblood. Yeah. Hey, girl. Um, Nelson, as as always, is here and asks, can we talk about how talented and fine Victoria Monet is? Black lesbians who are femme. Oh, who are femme for femme finally have some talent, have some talented eye candy to obsess over like black gay boys have, have you meant to say have had um, with their faves for a while. Yeah, we could talk about it. You just ate it up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you just ate it up. Uh, but yeah, she eats. She's a gorgeous girl. And we're definitely, definitely going to be discussing Victoria Monet. But before we discuss the grabbies, we must address the thing. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> happy black history month let me tell you something artist history and black history was made by megan the megan the stallion um megan the stallion debuted with her diss track hiss yes it is giving presentation isn't it <laughs> i figured if i was gonna give you the librarian glasses that i may as well give the girls presentation teeth they, oh, and that would be Zeus. Hey, Zeus. Um, Megan Thee Stallion absolutely debuted and made history as the first, I don't think it's the first female, yeah, the first female rapper to debut at number one. Iconic. Iconic, iconic, especially the fact that it's happening in Black Your, B -B Black Your History Month. Um, we'd love to see it for her. And I, this right here, this, I... <laughs> I love that she ended her little, all of her firsts, right? Biggest debut or fastest selling song of the year. Number one here in every other country that speaks anything remote and remotely connected to English or Latin languages. She's just that girl, you know? Spotify ain't got to lie, but neither does Billboard. Hold on. <laughs> Billboard ain't got to lie. They really streaming her music. That's no shade. That's no shade. That's no shade. Oh, and I got on pearls. I'm giving you bitches librarian mm, instructor down. I'm giving you instructor down. Okay. 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 Right. And then Tron says first female artist to debut at number one as an independent artist. Last time was Nikki, Super Freaky Girl, and Lauren Hill. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. First uh, as an independent artist. Yeah, she ate that. 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 Um, Shout out to Lauren Hill and shout out to Nikki Minaj. Incredible women in music. We love to see it. Right. We really do. We really do. Oh, my God. Siren, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Siren. Now, <clears throat> let us move on. To why we are all gathered here today. The Grammys. Oh, I mean, Scammies review. <laughs> scammies. I love that the people are calling it Scammies because that is funny to me. <laughs> that is funny to me. You, you motherfuckers are creative. Y'all are fucking creative. Um, so let's move on. <clears throat> Listen. I, I, I'm starting this off by saying this. And again, I'm not an op. We're, we're together we are we are together i do think that the grammys are the scammies i do think that this is a racist institution um a misogynistic particularly misogynoir um istic institution and so but we can hold two conversations at once and we do have to acknowledge the reality that the grammys are the biggest night and music and i don't see that changing for a long time now um 
I do want, I didn't know if I wanted to start off swinging, start off swinging with this clip because my sister was so, girl, my cousin was so confused. Lou Ivy was like, dad, I didn't, <laughs> wait a minute, I, I didn't sign up for this. I came up here, girl, in my comfortable boots and evil, evil gown just to stand here and serve the girls just statuesque, girl, statuesque. And you, you try to fuck the club up. <laughs> Hands up. I'm unarmed. Don't fucking shoot. I'm only 11. Um, I'm praying for Blue Ivy. But we are going to play this clip because I think that it's an important place to begin when we have the conversation about the significance of the Grammys and why we keep having these conversations about divest, 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 and divestment never really happens from us or them, right? Um, but it seems like there is a bit of a shift and we'll discuss that right after this. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Uncle Snow. Um, Shout out to Uncle Snow. Honored, honored to accept it. Honored mm -hmm. to accept it. Let's get to and it. And thank you to the Black Music Collective for all the work that you guys do. Scholarships for young creatives. Amen, amen. And amen, hopefully, amen. you know, I'm adding to, you know, what you guys are doing out here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, it's uh, it's great to have a, an award um, for such an icon. Get, get to it. Get to it. With, uh, Will Smith and Fuck. The Jazzy Chef and the Fresh Prince. Oh, I didn't know they were the first Grammy in 89. Yes, I, I didn't and know that. boycotting because it wasn't televised. And then they went to like a hotel and watched the Grammys. I didn't even understand what the... It wasn't a great boycott. Um, yeah. But then, 98, I took a page out of their book. I was nominated for Best Rap Album. Increase the volume. DMX had dropped two albums that year. They both were number one. Shout out to DMX. And he wasn't nominated at all. So I boycotted. And I watched the Grammys. I'm just saying, we just, we want y'all to get it right. We love y'all. We love y'all. Ah, we here we are. We want y'all to get it right. At least get it close to right. Uh-huh. And obviously it's subjective. Y'all don't got to clap at everything. Obviously it's a Obviously, it's subjective because I ain't like that. You know, it's music and it's opinion based. But you know, some things. You know, I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So no. even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. <laughs> Think about that. Look at Blue Face. Most Grammys never won album of the year. That doesn't work. Mm -mm. It don't work. You know, but Jay, some of you, Beyonce, some of you gonna go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Uh huh. Some of you made it, Rob. <laughs> no, Jay! Jay, no! Jay! Some of you don't belong in the category. Ah, Jay! No, 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 that was it. No, oh, when Jay. I get nervous, I tell the truth. What? Um, no. But outside of that, outside of that, you know, we gotta keep showing up. And forget the Grammys for a second, just in life. Yes, right, cause you Cause ripping I, the girls. My daughter sits and stares at me nervous as I am. Um, Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've heard it up. If you have people, Drake, let's go to Drake. Singing your songs word for word. If you're a hero in your hometown, yeah, I'm terrified. If, look, look. Woo, if I'm there's terrified. people who have regular jobs who are coming out in the rain, in the snow, spending their hard-earned money to buy tickets to come to your shows, Amen. You don't need this right here. I promise you. You already won. Yes. That's enough. That's enough. Next. That's enough. 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 Ooh, the way that Beyonce windmilled in the car. Oh, it's the way that Beyonce uppercut it. It's the way that right hook. Actually, I would hate. Let me call Mother Tina. 
Let me call Mama Tita because I would hate to have to bring her other daughter out. I would hate to have to bring her other daughter out. She hasn't battled in a long time, but she's been dying to dance with the devil. She's been dying to dance with the devil. Listen, now, it needed to be said. It needed to be said for a number of reasons. Now, before we get into why the Grammys is that institution, um, yes, yes, um, I think Solange Knowles was in the back. I think Solange Knowles came and parked in an all-black, blacked-out Honda Civic, unsuspected. You're the Toyota Camry. You'll never suspect me. She had on black boots, a black total. She had on what I have on. Same shake and go, egg. Same shake and go, egg. Solange came out in some Chelsea boots and... <laughs> bitch ran up from behind and boom, body slammed that nigga. <laughs> Solange, I can see it now. If this footage gets out... <laughs> if this footage is released... Let me tell you something. And you know what? I don't condone violence, but I might just have to look the other way. It was embarrassing and necessary. Have y'all ever just like, it was so embarrassed. I was secondhand embarrassed and in power. I was like, ooh, ooh. yes. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm certainly not a Grammys apologist. I just don't like when people make, I don't like positioning Beyonce as desperate for anything. She's Beyonce. Right. And so the brand is opulence. We've discussed this and we'll continue to discuss this um, ad nauseum in perpetuity. The brand is opulence. She owns everything. And so to be in the Grammys basically saying like I'm hurt on behalf of this beautiful young lady. I didn't like the look. Optics are everything. Um, and the optic is opulence, opulence. Now, did Beyonce lose anything from Jay-Z getting on that stage and pulling a Kanye West? No. <laughs> She's still Beyonce. She's still Beyonce. Um, but I just didn't like the look of it, right? From a PR perspective, I know Yvette was, uh, Yvette called Solange. Beyonce's PR agent called Solange. Get here now. Oh, she's Caribbean. Get here now. No. And that's and she sent the black Toyota Camry <laughs> with the shake and go wig in the trunk. Okay. And actually, it was all black with that same strap sandal. Standing on business. <laughs> Standing on business. Okay, seriously, I really don't condone violence, and that's not cute at all. Here's what I think happened. Here's what I think led Jay-Z to get to that point. It was reported a month or so, about a month and a half ago, that Beyonce was going to be performing a tribute to Tina Turner, right? Um, did I believe it? Absolutely. I don't remember if I thought that the source was entirely credible or the variety of sources were really credible. I think what I thought was Beyonce is obsessed with Tina Turner. Beyonce has many, um, Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce pulls from many of the greats, but you can see if you watch Beyonce that some of her, her greatest influences are Tina Turner and Michael Jackson, I would say. I would say it's Tina Turner and Michael Jackson for sure. Um, and so that passing made her shift her entire, not her entire, but she added that song to a set list, consistently tweaking a tour that is meticulously, that was meticulously created over three years. And she inserted that because that was the significance of that woman to her. So if the Grammys calls, I'm sure Beyonce was like, you know what, I can do this, especially because of, you know, if you're Hive, you know, the girls have been speculating that Beyonce is going either rock or country for act two, right? Rock or country. We were really leaning into that rock feel. Last night she gave us country boots. I think she's trying to throw us off. I still think she was going rock. But I think Jay-Z and Beyonce, if in my in my mind, Jay-Z and Beyonce had a lengthy conversation where he was like, mm -mm. no. How many times are you gonna give these people your all? Put your body through all of the work that it takes that it takes to prep your your next tour, your next album, your next rollout, all of the things that are Beyonce, um, the business stuff, Ivy Park, whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop, and then to get, lend your time and all of your capital. Beyonce is incredibly wealthy with regard to her social capital. Why would you lend all of that 
to this institution that has not awarded you the highest award of the night. The highest award of the night is album of the year. It is what it is. It is what the fuck it is. Um, and the only reason why it's a it's a double-edged sword is Beyonce is, obviously she's wealthy in a number of ways, but when it comes to the Grammy, she is the most nominated artist. So again, I don't like the look of, but why did she not get Grammy of the year, hmm? And this is when I'm gonna take a stand against this institution. Not a good look for Beyonce because we don't want, we want, we don't want the optic of Beyonce looking desperate for anything, but also not a good look because you're from almost as high as you can go. You're sitting almost as high as you can go. And you're looking like, I want more. To a room full of people who would die to be this lady. Right? You know what I mean? Like, most nominated, most wins in Grammy history. The, the positioning. Now, obviously, Beyonce would never and can't really say that, what Jay said. I just think if you wanted to say that, you should have called Kanye. <laughs> he would have done it. Then you both could have looked surprised. Like, I can't believe the, I can't believe he, no, no Kanye. I want to call Taylor up and let her have her moment. Now, and, and we will be discussing Miss Taylor. Oh, and tonight, and tonight, we will be discussing Miss Taylor. Listen here, this was supposed to be Patreon exclusive for a number of reasons, but I'm finna let loose tonight, okay? I'm gonna give you girls a taste of what goes on behind the paywall. Behind the paywall. Now listen, now listen. I just, I, I, that's my theory on it. I think after the conversation she had with Jay-Z and her team, I, I think, now, did they really, did Jay really convince her not to do it? Mm, maybe not. Um, maybe she just said, you know, I can't do it at this time for a number of different reasons. And they called up Fantasia and Fantasia ate it up. Fantasia did a phenomenal job. Fantasia, mwah, best performance of the night. So good. Um, what was even funnier was when she was looking for a beautiful lady to dance with. And she danced with Dua Lipa. And Dua Lipa ate that with a cute little stank face. And then Beyonce said, mm-mm, girl. Mm-mm, look, look somewhere else. Don't, don't you dance with me. And don't you ask me to dance. It's not going to happen. Um... Anyway, uh, so let's 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 talk about before, you know, we get into the more because that was pretty messy, but we'll get into the more m meaty parts of today's moment um, a little bit later. But I do want to say a couple things with respect to why the Grammys is institutionally so important um, and why I don't really foresee that changing for um, a long while. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with what's known and I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this, I'm, we're gonna get into this and then I'm gonna read y'all comments because I see y'all comment and I'm reading but I'm not speaking to them. And so we're gonna discuss in just a moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna converse with you. I, we, we, we gonna chat it out. Don't hit that, don't no shoot, I went armed. Um, the Grammy bounce. The Grammy bounce is something that has, according to Forbes, because Grammys aren't really worth anything monetarily. Um, so I, I really wanted to understand the significance of a Grammy. And I'm like, is it really just a bunch of musicians and, you know, songwriters and stuff just like, just kissing each other's asses all night? Um, but the Grammy bounce is discussing um, the boost in ticket sales and the boost in income for producers, songwriters, artists um, after they get a Grammy, right? So they do see um, a boost in, I think it was about 55%. Let me make sure I'm, I'm not misquoting myself. Um, Grammy bounce, which is such a funny term. Who came up with you? Who came up with you? Mm. Yes, um, it's a uh, it's 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 talking English, babe. It says the Grammy bounce is uh, an increase in sales and heightened interest in the artists around the world. This phenomenon is typically referred to as the Grammy bounce, where you can see artists enjoying an average increase of about fifty five percent in concert ticket sales following the win. Um, and there's a similar kind of boost for producers in terms of the fee they can charge, the artists they get to work with, or the artists that, that express interest in their work. And I think that that has to do with a couple of different things. Um, Y'all know I'm a communications major and I've bounced around through the, through the communications discipline and one of them was PR. Um, and there's something in PR 
like called, which is, I think we all understand it called perceived importance and perceived importance is basically like, if you can put your space, if you can put yourself, your name, your brand in spaces that people already identify as legitimate, then your value to the public and your influence over the public grows, right? So what they're basically saying is like, oh, you're in, you're on the cover of Vogue, right? You are, you've been featured in, I don't know you know, Time Magazine in, in perpetuity, not in perpetuity, but continually. Um, you've won a Grammy, you've won an Oscar, right? And people associate these awards with prestige um, and the highest level of excellence. And so there is a value ascribed to that. We ascribe a value to that as the public, okay? But then there's also what I, many of us understand is like the Grammys gatekeepers. Come on, bullet points. Yes, well, it works. Mr. Revolvers, if you're nasty. Um, no, very important, very important. There's perceived importance and then there's actual importance, right? Um, because the Grammys, the voting members are made up of vocalists, songwriters, producers, you know, instrumentalists, so forth, engineers, so forth and so on. But it's also about these people sit atop the hierarchy in terms of access to, you know, to the different vendors that you need to create a successful show, um, to get you in those rooms that'll get you on, on those talk shows and get your, your name and your brands out there, get you in those mediums that boost your image, right? And that also place you in a positive light. Right. So you have positive connections with people who control the media <laughs> and he who controls the media controls the mind, in particular, the mind of your desired consumer. So you being in good graces with these gatekeepers places you in the it places you in a particular light. It's not just the Grammy, babe. It's not just the Grammy. It's all of those things working together to make the Grammy, it's what the, it's the, it's the symbolism of what the Grammy is giving. Um, and the last thing I have is that it does matter to me personally as a lover, the way that the, not the Grammy itself, but the way that it can structure and help an artist navigate through their life. Um, so it does matter to me. And I will use the argument that Beyonce is the most nominated and won the most Grammys in an argument. Quick, fast, quick, fast. Um, okay. Let me see what y'all said in the comments. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. I'm going to scroll up. I can't stand Jay, but he was speaking the truth, says Uzo or Uzu. I mean, yeah, he might have ate that one little, that one little thing. Um, Callie says, Lord have mercy, 55%. Yes. Oh, oh my wig just shuffled. It's giving, it's, did, did Solange get me too? Damn. Did she get me too? Um... Okay, Lady D says, how does Ice Spice become HGT? Wait, HJT? Oh, uh, you meant to say a hit? Okay, a hit overnight, if not for the people. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely something to be said about people who can be plants. I do not think that Ice Spice is talented. Um, There, I said it. I think she's beautiful. Um, I think that that's all I have to say, girl. She's not talented. But you know what? I had to look up because I was having this conversation. What is talent? What is what is talent? And I look at the exact definition. It's like maybe people are talented. It's just every talent does not need to be publicly displayed. Every talent should not be thrown in our face by the algorithm. Right. Because the definition of talent is a natural aptitude or skill, a natural aptitude or skill. So maybe her talent, <laughs> I don't know what her talent would be. It's not really rapping. Um, I think that in order for you to say that someone has a talent for rapping, they have, they have to have a natural aptitude for poetry, a natural skill for finding the, not even just the rhymes in poetry, but the, the abstractness that comes from poetry, being able to think creatively in ways that people who are more logic-minded, more analytical cannot. Um, that's the talent. Talent is not a prerequisite to be a rapper anymore. Talent is not a prerequisite to be a singer anymore. 
Um, actually, I'm, I'm actually, I find myself walking it back. These bitches are not talented. Man, woman, and baby, not talented. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, I just personally wish that we would get talent. I like talent. I like art. I like art. I think you can't really have art without talent. And we're not getting art because these bitches are not talented. Um, Lady D says the Grammys is bull. They did. These typos gonna take me out. <laughs> these typos gonna take me out, y'all. They didn't accidentally say the wrong winner. Oh, you talking about Mickey Minaj? You talking about Mickey Minaj? We gonna jig it to Mickey Minaj. Siren says I appreciated the message, but the message was just well, just well. Yeah. The first of all, Jay Z's speech wasn't. It, it, it was very like I, he thought about what he, the gist of what he was going to say, but he got up there and just that's why he kept saying, I'm nervous. You know, I'm nervous. Um, <clears throat> we can tell, babe. We can tell. I wish you would have um, said it to yourself in the mirror a couple more times. Um, Big Pookie. <laughs> yes, Big Pooks. Big Pookie says her music before she made Munch was unique. And while it wasn't the best thing out there, she definitely had a sound that could have been nurtured. Um, yeah, probably. I don't know any of her music before Munch. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Are you gonna, are you gonna move on? Are you gonna... Are you gonna move on or oh oh now let's actually start with um my sincere con see this is positivity i'm actually shifting to positivity these are my sincere congratulations the people who i am actually legitimately there's no shade involved in this i am truly happy for them shout out to SZA. nine nominations the performance was okay but the nominations and the three wins absolutely well deserved she won for best um, urban contemporary album, which we know urban just means non-white. Urban just means non-white. You blacks are making music and you made the best music of the blacks. Shout out to you and happy Black History Month. Get the fuck out of my face. Don't ask for too much now. Fuck. So shout out to her for winning that though. It's still an incredible feat. Um, best R&B song for Snooze and song as I remember it is for the writ is for not just the the vocals or not the vocals. It's for the songwriting, right? Um, and I thought that Snooze was written pretty well. She was saying things that are so specifically SZA, you know, <laughs> so specifically SZA, <laughs> mobbing. Scheming, looting, hiding your bodies. <laughs> oh, my God, today, the delusion. Oh, yeah, that's so specifically SZA. Um, But we love that level of vulnerability, and it's beautiful. Stream snooze. I do. I definitely do. Um, And she also won Best Pop Duo slash Group Performance for Ghost in the Machine featuring Phoebe Bridgers. Um, We love that song. I think that song is conceptually really smart, really cute. And it is a pop song. I think it's interesting that that was recognized as pop. Is Phoebe white? <laughs> Phoebe's white, correct? If I remember correctly, Phoebe is a white person. Phoebe. Phoebe. Yes, she is. Ah. Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised that she won best pop song, you know, with a white woman by her side? Not saying that that was a prerequisite, but I'm saying you do the math. Okay, I, I don't know much about algebra. Okay, but one plus one equals pop. One plus one equals pop. One plus one <laughs> equals urban, contemporarily. Let's move on. <clears throat> Victoria Manette. Oh my God, Victoria Manette. Yes! The time has come. <laughs> Ladies, the time has come for Victoria Manette. Um, I loved Victoria Manette. I forgot to stop saying Manette. Um, I love that, you know, Victoria won. I was in tears almost. Oh, my mama. Oh, my mama. Okay? Oh, my mama. Seriously, truly. Um, Honestly, she won 
Victoria Monet, just so that people in the comments know that I know her name is Monet. <laughs> Calm down. I stream her music. Okay, I don't buy it. I don't have that money. Um, but I stream her music a lot. A lot. I've probably bought her, I've at least bought her daughter a popsicle. <laughs> at least. With the amount she's gotten paid for my streams. Now listen, she won Best New Artist, Best R&B Album, and she won Best Engineered Album Non-Classical. Absolutely deserved. She had seven nominations. She won three of them. Beautiful, beautiful moment. Obviously, it's kind of like, hmm, what's the word? Not bittersweet, not sublime. I'm just in the middle of my feelings because Best New Artist for someone who's been out for 13 years is kind of interesting. Um, interesting. Um... But, you know, <clears throat> her work, I believe, has won Grammys, right? No, maybe? I don't know that to be a fact. Like, I'm thinking, when I'm talking about her work, I'm talking about the song that she's written. Maybe, but no, no. This, these are her first Grammy wins. Um, so shout out to her. I mean, really, truly. It was emotional to watch. I would have also loved to have seen her perform, considering she was nominated. So, her, so like, she's two nominations behind SZA, and SZA performed. <clears throat> And this is a good performer, but Victoria Monet is stellar. Victoria Monet is stellar, a stellar performer. Um, m m my sincere congratulations continued. Um, Coco Jones, five nominations, one win. You know, I don't consider this a snubbing. I don't consider this a snubbation. Um, she won Best R&B Performance for um, I See You, which is a classic R&B song, if you ask me. And performance is about the vocal performance. It is about, girl, the vocals on the track. Um, and so for me, well-deserved. I See You is so good. Ooh, it's so good. It's, it's a rich, sultry, um, full song. It's a very full, round song. Um, and you can really get into some of those tenor notes. She, her, her alto pocket is just chef's kiss um so shout out to her and this is for an ep so for an ep to get a f five nominations and now she's a grammy award-winning artist we are rooting for my girl and finally in my sincere congratulations we do have tyla 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 now i'm happy that tyla won a grammy shout out to tyla right sue me i'm rooting for everybody that's black um she won for best african music in my mind in my mind um, water, water has a pop feel to me. Water, wa now Tyler is that girl. And Tyler is South African through and through. Um, she will remind you she is not black. So she will not be celebrating Black History Month with you niggas. <laughs> you niggas go nigger over there. <laughs> you niggas go ahead and nigger over there. She's colored. <laughs> okay. Um, no shade. <laughs> You know, but seriously, the race works different in South Africa. Anyway, um, I would have gone maybe, I wanted to I wanted to say Aya Stock. Her name is Arya, Arya Star. I would have gone her. Uh, Rush has much more, to me, of an African sound. Um, and it's a really well-constructed song. I would have gone Burner Boy. City Boy is not the most Afrocentric song he's made. Um, but Burner Boy absolutely deserves a Grammy. Does Burner Boy have gra a Grammy? I don't know if he does. Um, so if he doesn't, I would have gone him. Those are, those are, oh, and, and my honorable mentions are Burner Boy, Arya Stock, um, and Miley Cyrus. Let me tell you, ooh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Miley Cyrus is that bitch. And I don't want to hear shit else about it. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything else about it. Miley Cyrus was my first, I, like, bef before I even knew that you could stand someone, I was standing Hannah Montana. Oh, best of both worlds went triple diamond in my household. Nasty work. I always reach for my yellow towel or a yellow shirt, you know, so I can give the girls, you get the bad. What? What? I will take this off right now and give y'all, I'm not hurt me. I'm Miley. Um, but, you know, <laughs> you know, my hair's not done under here. My hair is not John under here. Um, so shout out to Miley Cyrus winning her first Grammy. Hits a special place in my heart. Um, and we miss you in your light skin black era. Mwah. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. So don't attack me. But Hannah Montana. Uh, uh, 
Hannah Montana is that bitch. Um, now let's move on to some fashion do's. Um, and yes, I'm only going to do my top two and my bottom two for the fashion don'ts. Um, but let me see what y'all say in the comments before I actually read Janelle Monet for giving me all that and then some. Let me see. Um, Tyler says, do we though? Is this a relationship to, to Miley Cyrus? I can't. <laughs> Minnie Monstera says, now Herbie, she was never light-skinned. Oh, you must not have been listening during um, the Bangers album. <laughs> that song 23? I'm... In the club, have perk with some cheese on, tied it up, mean skirt. What? J's on my feet. J's on my feet. Light skinned it. Light skinned it black. Light skinned it black. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe like fluorescent beige. Maybe she was fluorescent beige, girl. But she was definitely a sister. <laughs> It's a joke, people. The fuck? That's definitely a Caucasian woman from the mountains of Caucasus. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, she's definitely... Okay, let's move on because y'all gonna continue to tell me that Miley Cyrus is not the shit and I'm gonna always tell you that she's at least the fart. So we just can't... We just, you know, I can't. It's not gonna work here. Whatever you're trying to do, it's not gonna work because I am delusional um now fashion dues janelle monet janelle monet if i counted the ways that oh wait a minute hold on i'm here and not even showing y'all all of the things now ooh, one more time mm -mm, yep yep thank you thank you don't embarrass me <laughs> thank you don't embarrass me <laughs> now <clears throat> janelle monet <laughs> Let me count the ways. Um, so Janelle Monet here is wearing Giorgio Armani Privé. And for the girls who are not fashion girlies, Privé just basically means it's Italian for private. It essentially means limited, luxe. You can't get your hands on it, but she, as Janelle Monet, absolutely can. Absolutely, oh, excuse me, Janelle Monet, absolutely can. Now listen. Um, oh, so sorry. <laughs> My mind went to... Do I got food downstairs? <laughs> I was like, when I get off of here, do I have food downstairs? And I do, I have Chinese. So I'm very excited about that. This look was styled by Alexandria. Is it, uh, now don't don't fight me. Is it Medelcorn? Alexandria Medelcorn? Um, wonderful job, wonderful job. I love this sequin moment. It's very, I have my, for my thoughts, top three words, right? For my top two girls, chic, opulent, timeless. I love a timeless moment on a red carpet um, and this silhouette. Oh, by the way, I'm not really a fashion girly. Like I don't really, I can't name you the hottest stylists and the, and, you know, but I am a style girly. I am a sucker. Um, somebody said from the neck down, yeah, it eats. Wait a minute, hold on. Y'all don't live for the hair? I thought the hair was very simple. Very like, cause the dress is sequin. It is a floor length gown. What was going to be my critique for the floor length gown is I would have loved it, uh, the hem to be a little bit higher in the front. Um, but there is a split in the front. So we get a little bit of, we can still get into the shoe. We can get, you know, leg action. I enjoy this. I No notes. No notes. And again, I'm not a fashion girly in depth. I think, I, like I said, I consider myself a style girly. I know a good cut. I know a good silhouette. Um, and I know when something just works. And this just works, in my humble opinion. Um, and then my next fashion do is certainly, how could I not? It was her night for me. She took it. She won all of the things. Queen Victoria Bidet. Victoria Bidet. In custom, she is wearing custom Versace. And, you know, Versace often gives me nausea. Versace often gives me nausea. Like I look at the outfits and I'm like, whoa, so many patterns, so many colors. Y'all call it opulent. I call it gaudy. Um, and it feels very inspired by a specific kind of hood aesthetic meets some Parisian elements, Italiana 
to me, I just get nauseous. I need Pepto-Bismol next to me every time I see somebody wearing, or many times when I see somebody wearing Versace, even when they do go eleganza, extravaganza. However, this is beautifully crafted. Beautifully crafted. This was styled by Colin Carter. And the girls just know. The girls just know how to strap up and lace up a woman in a nasty silhouette. Shout out to the gays. The gays just, they can do things. <laughs> Well, you know, we can do things. And this is one of the things that we just seem to do so fucking well. Because this is phenomenal. Um, my thoughts immediately when I looked at this were branding, unforgettable, and yet again, timeless. Of course, we know that she's known for the brown, the bronze. Um, and this felt like an elevated Victoria Monet look. My only note, back to the note about the hem, um, is I wish that we got a little bit of a, you know, higher hem so that this would be a little bit, the, the train would be just a little bit more dramatic and she would look a little bit taller. As a short girl, we want, we want a statuesque moment. She looks like a trophy, you know, walking gold, but I would have loved, you know, just a little bit of shoe so we can get a bit of a break, um, here. If that makes sense. I don't know. I could be wrong. Y'all could be like, girl, your notes are awful. Um, wait a minute. Somebody said the gays got Miley together. Those were the evil gays. <laughs> Those were the evil gays. Mm -mm, you can't trust them. You can't trust the evil gays. Girl, they, just, they do things that no one asked them to do. <laughs> no research. No thoughts, just vibes. You can't trust those bitches, okay? Don't you leave your car started outside while you're running to go grab something to eat. The evil gays will steal your, steal your fucking car to run and go grab silhou silhouettes and sequins like that. Not that. That's evil. Like Miley's. <laughs> what well, Lady D said, they don't speak for us. They don't speak for us. And we certainly don't speak for them. Let's move on. Somebody said, excuse me, Miley 8. Let's move on, please. Oh, my God. It's getting hot in here. Um, now that we've gotten all the positive out of the way, and you girls are trying to drag me down to the dirt and the mud, we're going to move on to my shady congratulations. How long have I been here? I feel like it's been a while. Okay, I, I don't want to be here more than an hour, so let me speed it up. A shady congratulations to Taylor Swift. You know what? I'm not a hater. I did a video that is now Patreon exclusive. So if you're on Patreon, you can look at it where I actually entertained the argument that a lot of the Swifties were making. Because, you know, the Swifties and the Beehive were battling, battling, pulling both sides by their blonde, each blonde, <laughs> their 613 lace fronts. Um, you know, this one has more Grammys, but this one has more Billboard hits and this one sells better, but this one can sing with the mic on and it was just a lot. So I entertained that argument um, because I see what y'all are trying to do. I see what you girls are trying to do, but I send that assignment back. <laughs> I send that demonic assignment back from where it came. You understand what I'm saying to you? The, the assignment is the comparison of Beyonce to any soul. <laughs> Living or ancestral. Now, Kirby, don't get crazy. There are some ancestral souls that we can certainly compare Beyonce to that I would entertain. Tina Turner is one of them. Michael Jackson is one of them. There are some ancestral souls. Alive? No. No, 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 no. She has no peers. She has no peers, baby. She has no peers, but I understand the scale argument and that's what I said, but we are congratulating Taylor Swift because she won um, album of the year woo, for the fourth time, making her um, the person with the most wins for the highest award of the night. You know, I'm not hating on Taylor Swift. I actually said in that video that's Patreon exclusive that I think that Taylor Swift is talented. Taylor Swift is talented. The girls who say she has no talent are being disingenuous. Um, I don't think that, I think some people go to an extreme when they're discussing um, the level 
the level that Taylor Swift operates at, at if they're not discussing scale. When the conversation is on scale, I have to I have to respect that argument. Taylor Swift is selling out stadiums. Taylor Swift is charting one through 10 on Billboard. Taylor Swift is writing these songs front to back, okay? And Taylor Swift is singing and giving you a nice little, you know, not an eight count, but certainly a four to six count. It depends. She's giving you a four to six count. You understand what I'm saying to you? Taylor Swift is talented. Um, but in my view, when we're discussing album of the year, you know, SZA took the year, you know? And it's just, let's have that conversation. It's not about comparing two women. These two women were nominated in the same category and I have an opinion on who I think should have won. SZA, we're not even gonna talk numbers and everything because we'll be windmilling all night, right? Because midnight was one through 10 on Billboard, okay? Um, hot, hot top 10, hot 100, right? Um, but I believe that, you know, if we are discussing Billboard, that the album, her album, SZA's album SOS was number one for what, 20 weeks? 20 weeks, a little over 20 weeks. And also when we're talking about the level of work and cultural impact, right? We continually kept talking about SOS. Snoo whether we were discussing Snooze, Kill Bill, Kill Bill video, Snooze video, Snooze remix, um, you know, SZA's interviews on SOS. If we were talking about um, the way that, and also when you look at SOS as compared to the uncertainty and, um, you know, confusion in, in the feminine encapsulated control, right? Because the voice throughout control was a feminine voice throughout that. And the voice throughout... Um, the voice throughout SOS was a masculine voice. I believe maybe her therapist. Um, and you'll see that there's elements of self-destruction, aggression, um, freeing herself. And it and it aligns itself with more masculine energy in this, it, it, this, just conceptually. And then SOS, like someone send help. But like send help for who? Because she doesn't really want it. Because she's, she's the one seeking help and destroying. Seeking and destroying. Let me tell you something. SOS is a body of work, okay? Um, and we are super happy for all the wins that SZA got. SZA always talks about like, you know, I didn't even know I would make it this far, being nominated for all these Grammys and do, 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 you know? And she always, she's like, I've done everything that I thought that I would do. I hadn't exceeded those things. Um, and we love that for her. We love when people can exceed their own expectations. It's a beautiful thing to witness. And that's when we come in with our salon strap heels and, w and move you to the side and windmill on your behalf. We windmill on your behalf. Because as a full body of work, Midnight's, to me, didn't feel conceptually novel, right? Um, it didn't feel unique, <laughs> unique as compared to SOS. I just, I don't want to be this girl, but I've got to be honest. I was unhappy with that. Um, but shout out to Taylor. I don't want to take anything away from I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> but S SOS was one of the best albums. Well, not of all time. Um, but certainly of all of 2023. It came out in 2022, but y'all know. It came out the latter part of 2022, so it's counted in 2023. And that's another thing. Like, it stayed in conversation so fucking long. It's still, it, isn't it still on Billboard Top 10? Snooze? I can't, I, you know, I just, I, I was disappointed, but again, shout out to Taylor Swift, Shady, congratulations, now, uh, Shady, congratulations to Killer Minaj, <laughs> don't fight me, don't fight me, I know y'all throwing tomatoes, um, I meant to say Killer Mike, or Nicki Minaj, or, we don't know who really won, we don't know who really won, um, because the Grammys are a shady institution, now, sincerely genuinely congratulations to killer mike i mean shout out to you really three grammys spectacular um arresting you racism what are my thoughts racism 
the, I watched the video where they said you assaulted the, um, allegedly assaulted the security guard. It looks like y'all got into it, but I didn't see assault. Not from the angle of the video that I watched. I didn't see assault. So for them to, and then also they wanted to detain you just to speak to you. Excuse me. I don't, I'm not sure if you would have been in handcuffs had you not been a big black man. And, and they had, and they thought that you detained someone when there's footage, they can view the footage. That arrest was pure embarrassment. And it, you win a Grammy, get off the stage and you're arrested in black history. Bro. Don't mind me, I'm casting a spell. The spirit of Angela Davis. The spirit of Angela Davis. Um, and to the cops who came and picked up Killer Mike and handcuffed that big, beautiful black man, you will begin to cough in three days. Bitch! <laughs> you thought you was the shit, brat? Well, you gonna begin to cough. <laughs> Seriously. Don't fuck with me, I'm Haitian. Now, um, what do I think that the Grammys absolutely intentionally shaded Nicki Minaj? Oh, girl, 100%. <laughs> oh, girl, 100%. They are so damn shady. Okay. Mm -mm. Girl. Um, Crystal asks, are you really a Zoe Herbie? Yeah, I'm Haitian and Jamaican. Surprise! Let's play this clip of um, someone pull, calling out the things because I thought that this was interesting. Oh, hopefully you all can hear it. Pretty big mistake they made right here. Like, it's literally on the official fucking Grammys page. Oh, wait, let, let's Google it. Let's type current nominations. Let me enter this. Oh, rap album, whatever. View all, blah, blah, blah. Rap song, Barbie World. But like, y'all seriously want me to believe that, oh, they just mistakenly put it on their website, reported it to every news outlet, tweeted it off of their own fucking page. Let me find this shit. Damn, girl. I don't even curse that much back to back. Now, 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 this is what I'm saying. You barbs. <laughs> You barbs. And the barbs. Somebody. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say what I was about to say. I, I almost said what I was about to say. Um, and I would have said it if we was behind a paywall, but we are not. So I'm going to bite my tongue in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. Listen, what time, what time is it? Let me get my time count. Oh, my God. We almost had an hour mark. They absolutely did that on purpose. Like, girl, it's... it's uh, they absolutely did that on purpose. I don't, you know, my best friend is a barb and it's always with him. Corporate giants, machines, they out together. Girl, you don't see it? And I'm like, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't, babe. I don't. I don't see how a corporate giant and machine can make her get on live and say, you lie, no, you live, mama. You live, mama. But it's moments like these that give those arguments credence because how do you accidentally tweet that post that to the grammy page um you know alert all of the people it gave very much so it gave very much so we were gonna give you the award you were so close spooky um but it's not gonna happen for you we thought about it <laughs> and we wanted you to make you think we, we wanted you to think that you were actually that girl that you had made it back into our good graces um, but actually, we're not going to do that for you, beloved. We are not going to do that for you, beloved. So I agree. Um, I have to begin to wrap this up because I don't want to exceed the hour mark. Um, now, let's talk about fashion don'ts. It's so funny that y'all brought up Miley Cyrus before. It's so funny that y'all brought up Miley Cyrus before. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what the fuck is this? No, be honest with me. What the fuck is this? Huh? So, 
I tried to be fair. <laughs> I tried to be fair. Like I was trying to be fair with everyone else. Okay. She's wearing Take It Off. <laughs> styled by herself in a dark closet. Gotta be. Must be. No other explanations. Um, and my thoughts are, is giving real drunk housewife of Tennessee. Um, it is giving great value Dolly Parton. Um, and it is giving me remove it immediately immediately i hate the hair i i hate the outfit oh and that shoe that shoe is a sin and a crime double homicide double homicide this is ridiculous this is i and i love miley we i just i just spelled it out before I fell in love with Beyonce, when I was too young to really get into Beyonce like that, it was Miley for me. Oh, it was Miley for me. It was Hannah Montana to be specific. And then it became Miley. Seven, the seven things I hate about you. Yes. Yes. Oh, and Party in the USA still gets me on the top of my feet, right? But I can also say that this is wrong. This is wrong. This, this is wrong. Maybe at the country awards, <laughs> you know, maybe there, not the Grammys. Um, and I'm not even going to entertain this. These are my thoughts. If you can't read backwards, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me be serious. Not today, Satan. Need I say more? The level of perplexity. I, this, I was gobsmacked. <laughs> Bitch, I was scrolling down on gobsmacked. It is the medium brown nipple spilling out for me. It is the entire ensemble. But worst of all, but worst of all, I'm hateful for these godforsaken shoes. What the fuck? Are these snake skin, leopard skin, lizard skin? These red platform god awful heels. I am disgusted. <laughs> no, I don't got to go that far. I really don't. But this is an awful look, you know? Um, and then the tattoos, right? The paint on tattoos. Why? Why? It gives me, I want to disrupt the Grammys. I want to disrupt the Grammys <laughs> in the worst way possible. Um, this was the worst look of the night. And you know what? I have other looks that I wanted to discuss, but I love those girls too much. I love them too much to go there. But the, I'll just say this. Wig. Mm-mm. wig it's no reason you should be having on what looks like a synthetic wig at the grammys with all that money it's no reason it's no reason it's no reason no oh my god i'm about to have a panic attack oh my god i'm about to have a panic attack i am about to have a panic attack <laughs> no I'm not going to say no names, but wig, 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 wig. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> yes, the pot is calling the kettle black. The pot is definitely calling the kettle black. <laughs> No, this is embarrassing. Wait, Herbie, this is why you can't say this. 
Now, I would have said it behind the paywall. I may still. Do I want to do a part two? Do I want to do a part two? Um, just getting into the looks. Because, honey. Honey. Wig. <laughs> no, 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 no. All that goddamn money. Listen, 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 listen. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, I just don't want it to be giving me Toby. Let me move on. Um, so what is my hope for the future of the Grammys? Somebody have a panic attack. Um, <laughs> no, I love them. I can't. I can't do a part two, y'all, because our relationship is built on love, bonding, trust. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna pee a little bit. <laughs> okay, for real. Because why would you put on that wig? Oh my god. Seriously? Let's move on. <laughs> what is my hope for the future of the girl? Okay, yes, I will do a part two. <laughs> I gotta do a part two because y'all gonna make me pee a little bit. Um <clears throat> But that will be Patreon exclusive because I do I do love these people. Um and you know, I see the attempts. <laughs> Okay, seriously, can we move on? God, y'all get on my nerves. I'm gonna cry a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> what is my hope for the future of the Grammys? <laughs> I gotta stop laughing. Like, girl, you wanna get through it. Okay, my hope for the future. What I gotta do is stop reading the comments. Let me move. <laughs> yes, if I can read the comments, I'm not gonna go on. Okay. <laughs> Hard wig <wicks> soft. <laughs> okay, girl, you see, I, I'm in the Hard wig Soft Life Club. This is the really the gag. I'm also laughing at me because I'm dragging them dressed like this. <laughs> oh, the jokes write themselves, honey. No, but seriously. We do understand that the Grammys are of significance and importance. Um, and my hope is, girl, just you got to do better, girl. I can't even. I've been on here too long. I don't even want to go too deep. You just got to do better, girl. Let me go back to the beginning, girl. Um, you girls got to do better. We we are hoping and rooting for you. You know, we're rooting for everybody. Um, on the part two, we'll be discussing Wendy. Wendy don't do it. Mm -mm. You done, done I've done, I've done done enough. <laughs> I've done done enough. Um, but I love Wendy Williams, and I wanted to discuss. Whoa, what was that? Um, I wanted to discuss her um in this video, but I already knew that the Grammys was gonna take up so much of my time because you know, um, there was much to be said. But yes, we will be discussing in part two over on the Patreon and on the Patreon alone, which I will put in the description box. And well, by the time you're watching this video in the future, you'll already see it. And if you're watching right now, just circle back. It'll be there, there in like two minutes. Um, but yeah, Wendy is doing a documentary called Where's Wendy? Um, and, you know, Wendy is one of one. I don't want to say too much because, excuse me, I do want to save it for the live. Um, but there are certain things that I've not spoken about publicly and that I really won't because um, Wendy, in terms of people who have inspired me, my, my Mount Rushmore is so problematic, but Wendy is on my Mount Rushmore. Um, so we will, I think, well, I'm not going to tell you how my Mount, my Mount Rushmore is today. Maybe I'll tell you all that in the future. But um, yes, uh, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say. Um, we will be discussing more fashion decisions in part two. Wendy. Wendell Bob Holly Orthar, Rufus Clyde, Theodis Eldoba.
Pookie, James, and the Giant Peach, Hezekiah Walker Williams, Sia the Third. <clears throat> Behind the scenes, I had to. I had to. I couldn't resist. I had to. Um, we'll be discussing her um, and probably some other things you know, just for funsies. Like I said, I'll also be uploading an interview that I'm doing this week um, for a video that I have coming out on black male femininity in media and those representations. Um, and what else did I want to say at the tail end of this video? Um, what else do I have coming out? Oh, and some, and some like cute little BTS from my birthday that, you know, just to make it up for the people for making this public. Um, is part two going to be tonight? Hmm, what time is it? It is only 930. But see, I want to have the images. I want to have the images lined up. You know what I mean? I want to have the images lined up. So and I don't want to have to be Googling it because it's live. You know what I mean? Um, so maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. If you're on the Patreon, you'll I'll, 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 I'll keep you all posted. Mwah. I got to get up out of here. I love you so, so bad. But before I let you go, you know I will never leave you without saying this. I am in a constant state of practice, and so are you. You can never fail when you're in a constant state of practice. I love you. Mwah. Bye, homegirl. Oh, my God. It's 730 in South Africa. Are you still up? Wait, have I tried OBS? What's that? Oh, my God. Kadish, have you been here the whole time? <laughs> Hi, Kadish. Um, I don't know what that is. We've got to like exchange, just text me or DM me, one of the two, because I want to know what that is. Um, and shout out to you coming at the last minute. I know the people are gagging. Mwah, gotta go! <laughs> Herbie, oh my God, my breasticle. Ooh.